Hey everybody, Brian here. In this video, I want to show you this car here. This is a 2022 and it's a Hyundai Ioniq 5. This car is a 73 kilowatt hour battery, so it is the longer range in the car and the model is what's called Executive Plus. In this video then, I'll run through the features that are on the inside and the outside of the car and we'll go for a quick drive in the car as well. So if you're trying to find out more information about these cars, the video might be useful, but specifically on this one, it's probably going to suit somebody, uh, sorry, the video that is, is going to suit somebody that's actually looking to purchase this car if they're living in Ireland. If there's any information you want on this car or trading in a car, financing car, whatever you want to know, call, text, WhatsApp 086 843 1945. I'll run through information on the car or the other questions that you have. And we are a family run business in operation for over 70 years as a main Hyundai dealer. So the color in this car then is a cyber gray. Cyber gray is a very, very light, how would you describe it? It is a metallic color, but it's almost like a solid matte kind of look, if you know what I mean. So, uh, like I say, that's over there, that's a normal kind of, you know, dark kind of gray color. This is a much lighter sort of, hard to describe, but a, a flatter sort of looking color, if that makes sense, while still actually being shiny and metallic at the same time. Hard to describe, but anyway. So really nice things on these cars. I really like in here, you have, look at the construction of those lights. They're so cool. These are big uh, daytime running lights in through here. And then also then it'll have these really cool looking and actually quite effective as well, LEDs that are also built into the headlights. So they look quite nice, but they obviously emit quite nice lighting as well. Nice design cues on the front of the car. So it has this kind of brushed aluminium section along the visor front end on the nose. Down low, more brushed aluminium along through there. That's an active air flap. So what happens is when um, the battery gets warm, these open, they allow air into the radiator to cool the battery. Uh, and then after that, uh, when it's not necessary, they stay closed to try and help air deflect off the front of the car in a more aerodynamic fashion. The wheels are standard actually are a 19 inch wheel. So they have this nice, um, gloss black finish along here with a uh, diamond cutting along the edge so that's nice and shiny and reflective so it looks really nice uh, when the sun's shining on it but also at night time as well under artificial light when they're turning uh, so a 19 inch wheel it is a specific michelin tire and um, so if you are ever replacing tires on these there is specific uh, ev tires that are low rolling resistance uh, down the side of the car then you don't see any chrome uh, which is um quite nice so you've got black along here some of the specs come with like a cladding that is more of a silver finish uh, so this one has a black finish along through here and then up around the windows no chrome or anything like that so it matches the black that you see privacy glass on the rear and then after that there's a nice gloss black finish coming down which meets the top of the spoiler the rear lights are really cool looking so again a nice led finish so when you're driving behind the car like it's a really kind of distinctive look because of the shape of the car obviously but with those lights as well in through here then <coughs> we'll obviously have the rear fog lights which also come in an led whereas the indicators and the reverse lights are recessed down low on the bumper like what we saw before there's also a nice uh, brushed aluminium garnish along here and this one then it'll have a parking camera uh, for going backwards but also parking sensors then as well one thing i really want to get across to you on this car is the size of it so when you we're all looking at this car here um in this video you kind of look yeah it's a five door hatchback car just to give you some perspective dimensions wise it's actually about the same size as a tucson believe it or not so the car like we sent it looks like a five door hatchback and this is a super uh, popular suv along here but size wise they're pretty much uh, identical there's about five mil between the roof line so for somebody that wants a little bit of a higher driving position yeah tucson would work but just to give you an idea, this is a big car. Again, just trying to give you that perceptual look. The i30 is a five door hatchback car. This absolutely dwarfs it in terms of width and height. So that's what I'm trying to get across. When you look at this car, it looks like a five door hatchback car, but like dimensionally, it is just way bigger in every aspect than a regular hatchback car. Okay, so in terms of the boot, there's about a 520 litre boot. Okay, the charge cable is left not neat at the moment because uh, before the car sold, obviously we'll put it in, in a, a nicer kind of storage uh, way. But this car will come with a three pin granny socket. Okay, so that means basically this will plug into the car. So in through here, you've got a charging port. So this one is for the fast chargers public network. This one here is for the kind of charging you're going to do at your house. So this here can be used in conjunction with this here, which can be used in conjunction with a three pin socket in your home. However, that would be the slowest way of charging the car. The maximum you can do is about 10 amps. In other words, it can give you about two kilowatts per hour. This is a 73 kilowatt hour battery. So if it got two kilowatts every hour, two into 73 equals a very long time. Um, so you wouldn't do it. It's just kind of for emergency purposes. So this cable comes with the car then. So this is going to be one, we'll say that there's a male and female end 
one side plugs into a charge point one side plugs into the car itself and that is going to be able to say actually if you're charging in your home then a uh, house charger is going to transmit about seven kilowatts every hour so this is a 73 kilowatt hour battery divided by seven which is seven every hour so as you can see then seven eleven so about 10 or 11 hours for a full charge mind you most people never charge from obviously zero they never do that um but also you see these charge points here which we have in the garage so a single phase house can do maximum seven kilowatts every hour however uh, again using that cable that i talked about already you got these kind of charge points that we have this is three phase power because it's industrial they can transmit about 11 kilowatts every hour so 73 divided by um 11 then obviously that's going to bring it down to whatever it is seven or eight hours now on a car like this once you go into the public network the public network being the other little charge point i showed you with the two little prongs um there's charge points around the country that uh will be super fast um so in the space of maybe 18 minutes well actually apparently you can gain in within five minutes on a car like this on a super fast charger you can gain actually 100 kilometers so there's this car can charge up to 225 at certain points of its charge cycle which obviously is extremely fast um so for super fast charging this car is definitely going to be quite usable for someone that's got access to those kind of charge points but the predominant amount of people I've seen, they charge from their home and, you know, the public uh, network is more just for an occasional use. Right, these seats, um, in through here, there is a bar. So then that means we can slide the seat backwards and forwards, like you would do with the front of the car. This one here then allows me to fold that down flat. The reason you move them backwards and forwards is if you want more space in the boot, uh, or obviously if you want more space in the rear passenger area. Three head restraints, three three-point safety belts, eyes are fixed on either side. Um, these, as I was saying to you, are quite a big car. So normally when I sit into a five-door hatchback car, um, like sometimes I drive home by 30s, um, and they're grand, but they're, you know, once you put a child seat in the back, they get a little bit tight for space. Look at the legroom I have at six foot, uh, and that's actually not without even reclining this. If I can let that back, it gets way more comfortable. There's really a lot, a lot of room. Like I was saying to you, this is a big car, so there's a lot of room. Uh, in terms of sitting in the rear, this is what the view will look like. Um, because of the colour choice on the outside, this has a white uh, style door card up through here with it's a two-toned uh, type of effect. And I also then have ventilation for the rear passengers on either side as well. There's kangaroo pockets on both sides of the rear. This car is in super nice condition, which is to be expected for a low mileage car. Up front, you will have as an executive plus electric seating that goes backwards and forwards, obviously electric uh, lumbar support for lower back. And for the passenger, sorry, just in terms of door handle operation, push, pull. Um, height adjustable uh, passenger seat over here as well, be it in the manual uh, height adjustment, but at least there is still a height adjuster on it. One thing, just for access on that car. So a couple of things, you have lock, you have unlock, you got access to the boot. Actually, one cool feature is I can lock the car, but say if you wanted to start the car up and defrost it or something like that, you have a Blue Link app that'll do that. Or what I can do is lock, and then I can hold this button here. Uh, one, two, three, and you can see the car is actually started up remotely. So I could do that from a kitchen window. Uh, and then we have one here for the charge point as well. Um, so really the idea of this key is leave in your pocket. You walk up then, there's a little braille kind of fitting along there and you press that when the car's unlocked, obviously, uh, if you want to open up that and then to close it in through there. And then for locking and unlocking the car, you just push that and that locks the car or similarly push it again if you want to unlock the car. That's a little indentation in through here and then to open, push, pull. So anyway, we'll go for a drive in a sec. Over here, there is electric through windows and mirrors, which I locks folding electric mirrors from through there. There is the handbrake over here. There's the auto hold function, which basically keeps the brakes applied uh, even after you let go of the brake pedal, um, until you touch the accelerator, that is. I've got drive mode here for sport, for eco, and that'll uh, reduce or increase uh, throttle sensitivity, cruise control functionality, that kind of stuff. Um, controls over here for Bluetooth and radio. Controls over here then for cruise control, and it's adaptive as well. So once you set it, you can follow the car in front, set the distance you want to keep behind them. When they slow down, you slow down. Storage, that pulls back. Storage, wireless charging, USB, USB. And then after that, there is a, a drinks holder in through here. There's more storage down through there. And you see there, this is what's kind of cool on these. You have this kind of tunnel in through here, so it makes it feel a lot bigger. Um, USB then, this is the one, if you want to use things like Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, that's the one that transfers the data. These ones are for power, that's for the data. Uh, okay, so you have a fairly straightforward, warm, 
or cold function for each side. Uh, speed up or slow down the fan. These ones here are a little bit curious, so if you press the warmer button, it changes the dash in through here. Okay, I'm actually stuck in reverse. And while we're talking about that, actually, just to show you. To go forward, I press forward. To go backwards, I press back. To park, I press park. Uh, okay, so as we were saying, this button that says warmer, a little bit curious, it's unusual, well not unusual, but it's basically a shortcut into the heated seats for the front of the car, as well as the heated steering wheel. The other thing then, climate, basically just doubles up on all these functions along through there, but just in a nice digital fashion. Back into home then, so we've got an EV menu for all the settings that are to do with uh, the electric car and things. Um, there's various cool things in here, like what way you want your charging, a utility mode, which means you can leave the car running when it's not turned on to use the other um, auxiliary uh, functions in the car. Map in through there for navigation. To be fair, most people will connect their phone and use phone protection instead of the maps because they want Android Auto or Apple CarPlay for Google Maps and Spotify and all those kind of things. Uh, voice memo, if you want to record notes to yourself, climate, which is the same as what we saw already. Uh, heating, which is a similar idea for the heated seats and the steering wheel we saw already. Valet mode if you want privacy when you're driving the car. Quiet mode if you want to turn off the rear speakers. Blue link's pretty cool. That is allowing you to stop and start charging, lock and unlock the car, see where the car is located, defrost the car without going out to it in the mornings, and then all the settings in through there that you want to change on the functions in the car. Uh, the rear camera then is, um, a like we said, a rear camera with a radar, and also then a, a parking sensor set up with it there and you can have it facing directly downwards. So whatever way you feel is more comfortable. Uh, the other thing that's kind of cool on these when you're driving forwards, uh, you can press this button here and it leaves the rearward facing camera onwards when you're driving forwards. So that's kind of uh, neat, I think. Why would you do that, right? I actually sometimes find the rear view mirror and trying to keep an eye on a little person in the back in the child seat, but this is also showing me what's going on in the back of the car, so anyway. Let's go for driving the car. So the car, it drives really quiet, but like every electric car does. So they always feel nice. Do you know what you find actually in electric cars? I find on a combustion engine car, I want to drive maybe faster or harder. On an electric car, I just don't get that urge. Um, and what's nice is they have this kind of, the power is really immediate and straightforward. In terms of like, you know, maneuvering a car like this, it's quite easy and straightforward. The fact that it's an automatic car does help and the fact that you have the shift kind of sitting on the steering column, uh, again, it's quite um, convenient. Power-wise though, there's a lot of power. So a car like this generates 200 and, tw sorry, 215 uh, brake horsepower. So there's a lot of immediate power available compared to a combustion engine car. And in terms of um, electricity usage, there is a smaller battery, 58 km or 58 kilowatt hour. This is a 73 kilowatt hour. I actually feel like this one is easier on electricity. Uh, just looking at the consumption levels of what it's consuming as I'm driving, we had a 58 as a demo, and I'm finding that this 73 seems to use uh, the electricity in a more efficient manner than the small battery. Uh, one thing you might get good actually on these cars after a while, so you have this regenerative braking, okay? So what happens is, I'm gonna put it into drive for a sec. So if you see along here, you have these levels, okay? So all I'm doing is manipulating these paddles upwards or downwards along through here. So I zoomed, I have none, I have level zero, I have level one, level two, level three, and then an eye pedal, which is um, a little bit more aggressive. What I'm talking about there is regenerative braking. So basically when you let off the pedal, the motor switches directions and starts pulling the energy from the turning wheels. So the energy from the turning wheels moves up into the uh, motor. The motor is now reversed. So that pushes it back up into the battery. So it's trying to basically regenerate uh, and you know put power back up into the battery uh, rather than wasting it. What's great about that is you're not using your brake pads when you're slowing down. And after a while you will get good at this where you hold that pedal, uh, paddle even, and actually you can use that as a brake and that's not even using your brake pads. So that's kind of good because it puts energy back up into the battery, but it also reduces wear and tear on things like brake pads. So anyway, there you have it. If there's more information you want on that car, 086-843-1945, Brian's my name, uh, call, text, WhatsApp, whatever suits, and we'd be happy to go through information uh, on whatever you need. So anyway, hopefully the video has been useful. Thanks for watching.